Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we are back with a brand new video. A brand new video on a day that some, and I'm saying some, by the way, are currently calling a beautiful Sunday. And to me and a lot of the watching today's video, it certainly was as Rangers have finally, and I mean finally, reached a final of a domestic cup competition with a fantastic 2-1 cheeky channel favourite win over Celtic. Now of course it wasn't a gamey football that had anyone really sitting back enjoying themselves, cigars hanging out the mouth, feeling stress free. No, it was absolutely littered with stress, pressure on the ticker and it was gut wrenching every single moment and an occasion made you feel physically sick and that's probably what you're always expecting for this game of football that's why the old firm is the best derby that is left in world football and for me that is why we love the game and that is what we go through it sometimes ladies and gentlemen especially when it swings your way and the pendulum swings in your favour which of course it done this afternoon so we're going to go ahead we're going to go and discuss everything now the video is not going to be the, the, the usual flow where we break down every single aspect from the first minute all the way through and discuss in detail because again despite of course having a couple of bright sparks Thursday night and of course today this has easily been the worst week of my life ladies and gentlemen I'm not feeling too great I'm not doing too great and since obviously what's happened and everything like I put out we post in the response and some of the people that's reached out and some of the messages and the stories people's emailed commented and everything like that has really meant a lot to me people and again I feel like it's always important to tell you that this is your channel. It's not my channel. It's no, hey, look at me, I did this, I'm great, I'm more popular than that, blah, blah, blah. No, that doesn't bother to me. It genuinely, genuinely doesn't. I feel like why this works and why it's worked for so long is it's a conversation. It's us coming together and discussing the ups and downs of following this football club. And again, we've been through so much together. We've seen so much heartache in semi-finals, in quarter-finals and everything like that over the years. So now that we've went ahead and reached the final. I know we did in 2019 and we enjoyed that journey as well, but there's been a hell of a lot of downs regarding this thing and I just thought, you know what, I just want to sit here and see some happy faces, you know what I mean? So I do apologise, the video's not going to be the same kind of standard or anything like that, I just, I didn't want to let you do by missing this moment because I know how much it would have meant to so many years and again, I feel like I know so many names, I check the comments, I see you all, I discuss it and everything like that, so... Again, it's not going to be to the same flow and same, the same standard, but there is some things I want to go ahead and discuss. So let's go ahead and discuss Rangers 2, Celtic 1. The one time I didn't predict in a preview video, it actually happens. Sayer. Speaking of Sayer, by the way, I know there's a hell of a lot of Sayer Celtic fans right now complaining and foaming at the move, discussing this referee, this linesman, oh, he's got this wrong, oh, he's got this wrong, and just being raging. I mean, you saw what Michael Stewart was like, absolute tears running doing that sad face, talking about the referee, making up excuses. But honestly, Sifa was a Celtic fan, right? Honestly, and I didn't like that image, but Sifa was. Do you know where my frustrations would be? Do you know what I would be moaning about? I wouldn't it be about the referees who continually make decisions wrong every single freaking week and using that as an excuse to why you lost. You can moan about refs, but then you use it as an excuse for why you lost. Where I would be moaning, where my frustrations would lie far was a Celtic fan is why my team, who had an entire week to prepare for this cup semi-final, go out, ran and out, work the last stages and the longer this game went on versus a team who played 120 minutes on Thursday night in a gruelling Europa League quarter-final that gave absolute everything that could barely walk off the park two and a half days ago to where now they've been dragged in to extra time. And instead of Celtic being the fresher team and outworking them, it was the exact opposite. So that's where I think, if I was a Celtic fan, where my disappointment would be, why my players shrunk and go outran by a team who gave everything two and a half days ago. But again, the referee was an absolute shambles, but it was a shambles for both teams and he got so much wrong and the longer you watch today's video, you'll see how hypocritical these people are that are complaining and using the referee as an excuse because he was bogging, but he was bogging for both teams. The way this game actually started in the pace, it was frightening and I genuinely thought this was going to be an all-time classic, but after, for me, a 15-20 minute spell of actually good football, I thought... 
it slipped away from a classic football match in terms of, oh man, look at the quality of football, the build-up play, the skill. It, mere, it got dragged into who wanted it mere in here and who was willing to battle mere. It go, took away who can do the best pretty patterns, who's got the fastest left-hand side, who's got the fastest right-hand side. It was 1v1 battles all over the park. And for me, that was interesting to see this Rangers team who's been criticised by a lot of people, including myself, in some of the games, and again, rightly so, but... Players who have been mocked and to the build-up of this game told they're going to shrink for this, they can't handle crowds, they can't handle this. But for me, winning their individual battle. So I think you can see a lot. Again, it doesn't take a disappointment away for the league, but this is the way this game unfolded for me. It was a 1v1 battle with the opposite number across for you. And despite it being balanced the first 20 minutes, I thought the longer the game went on, the more Rangers took charge. And for me, Rangers... With a better team. Now again, there wasn't a lot in it, but that's the way it goes. That's all it can take. It can just take it swinging this way, no that way, to separate an old firm. And that's the way it did. And I thought someone who, for me, just really embodied everything that I've just said in the game was John Lundstrom, who, if I was making videos and everything was great and everything like during the week, I'd have sat here and I'd have absolutely sung his praises on Thursday night. Because to me, I've not seen a midfield performance like that in terms of just everything, the drive, the passion, since my man Barry Ferguson was in there running the show. And that's, I didn't give that compliment or praise lightly, people, but for me, that was the first time I actually saw a midfielder just grab a game like that and just do everything. And he'd done that on Thursday night and playing all the minutes. And for me, he'd done that again versus Celtic. And it's the first time in a very, very long time that we've had someone to say, right, you want to try and play through me? Well, ow go through you. And I genuinely thought John Lundstrom in this game of football, and that's all I can discuss, that's what we're here to discuss. John Lundstrom bullied every single one of their midfield because not one of them wanted the physical battle, and he gave it to every single one of them. He gave it to Hitati, he shrunk for the challenges and everything like that. He gave it to Conor McGregor, to Callum McGregor, sorry, he might need to probably gave it to Conor McGregor. Everybody slaps him around these days. But honestly, he absolutely nailed Callum McGregor and he looked like he was on a tumble dryer at one point, genuinely. And you never heard that man's name for the rest of the game after that. And that's what I'm talking about. It was a battle, it was a fight. And the Rangers side of thing was led by far by Lundstrom, who, spoiler for the rest of the video, was by far my man of the match. Absolutely outstanding from Big Scouts John. But again, it wasn't just the physicality they brought to the game of football. No, 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 no. He also brought in real football and quality with his first touch pass and dropped him in to the midfield, spring it. Some real brave first time passes, Air Maeda, Air Abada, and everything like that. And then, of course, his wonderful long strike that certainly deserved a goal, but it's never ever easy supporting this football club. That's why his 30 yard bullet bounced. Right back out. Could it not just hit the post and went in? No? Whatever. And the longer the first half went on, the more confident I was getting of getting a very good result because everything that's not been there in the last couple of old firms that we've lost to Ange Postacoglu's side was there in the middle of the park. We were winning that battle and that was giving us the platform for absolute everything. Despite us not doing too much again going forward, the midfield, we had well and truly it on toast and it was giving us the, the stranglehold in the game. But one of the first big chances of the matches, and something I want to talk about because there is a lot of complaints and everything about Bobby Madden doing a favour, the linesman being absolutely shocking, and everything like that, helping Rangers out. Do you remember this incident? Because I guarantee you, it's not going to get talked about or mentioned by anybody else for the other side making videos. In the first half, Maeda, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, he is an absolute country mile offside. He brings the ball down, Connor Goldson and Bassey's like this because he's so he's came so far for an offside position, it's laughable that Bobby Madden and the linesman didn't flag this up. He chests the ball down, slips a through ball to Hitati, and again the Rangers defensive were like, well he's he's no it's no this, it's no this. It is honestly taller than me and I know that's no a big thing to actually accomplish. But he's so far offside that it was just Everyone in the stadium was waiting, but the linesman and the referee let Hitati play on, and Hitati missed his 1v1 and hit it a mile wide. Now, to anyone watching today's video, do you think all these people that's posting the Madden memes and complaining and doing this and everything about linesman helping Rangers, do you think any of them would have done any of that or muttered that if Hitati had slapped that into the back of the net and they took the lead in the game against the Green? 
No, you wouldn't have heard it, ladies and gentlemen. That was absolutely horrific from referee Bobby Madden and the linesman. Honestly, I promise you, go ahead and watch the other side. They'll not mention that, but there'll be a five, six minute breakdown on a decision that didn't swing their way. I sit here and I call it like it is. I call every single referee. Normally when I'm on my game and I break down the entire game, I'll discuss all this for me. The referee overall was absolutely shambolic and so was Bay Flinesman who continually got things wrong air and there again. But wanted to mention that because we go into half time and for me again it was just more of the same. We just need a bit more going forward because we were the better side. We were dominating. We were winning the second balls. It was about putting the ball into the back of net and stop dominating just the middle and start dominating going forward. Guys like Joe Rebo for me could have pulled the trigger a couple of times. A couple of very good crosses but no enough bite in the Rangers attack. But going into the second half, it's more of the same from Rangers for me, winning the second balls, looking good in the middle of the park and Celtic, whenever they did get forward and whenever they did get into the right areas, it was awful deliveries. Or oh, John McLaughlin, who's another talking point from this game of football, just came out and caught it. It's such, football can be such a simple game sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. And I think these days with analytics and expected goals and stats and all this faffing about and everyone getting these made up roles, get at clubs and that, these days, it can be just diluted and people try and make it a lot more complicated. But for me, when you've got a goalkeeper that can just come off and claim anything, that just stops and you didn't need your centre-halves to be at this place or this place. You didn't need somebody on the line for this. If your goalie can just come out and take a ball, it stops the attack. The ball's not going to bounce 16 times in a box. It's not going to ricochet right to the back post or in the flat. I thought John was very good at the basics. It was near. Oh my God, he had a world-class save. But he was never put in that position today, an instant reaction save or anything like that, because everything that came into the box, it pretty much came and go, apart from after they took the lead, of course. But we'll get there, because we need to discuss more of the referee, which again, you'll know here a lot about, because despite Rangers looking good, it was almost a familiar story going back to the 2019, of course that was a final, but Rangers looking good, and then Celtic just gone up the park and getting something like that, and just going, how? Have they done that? How? Have they knew control, guilt control uh, this game? Sorry, and the way that it came down was Cam Cameron Vickers, sorry, he's running down the right-hand side, Roof's kind of chomping at his heels, he was brilliant as well, by the way, pressing everyone, given, given what he gave on Thursday night as well, that's why I talked up, because I knew what the laddie could bring to the table, and I thought people were too harsh, and this, um, just really rinsing him, and everything like that, but he was brilliant, he's nip, 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 no giving him a second on the ball. Now, I think he originally, maybe, fouls him, but then he takes a couple of more steps and never thought the referee's no plain advantage or anything like that. And then, the actual foul that Bobby Madden gives, Cameron Vicker takes his right foot, he puts it over to his left-hand side and he tries to catch the ball here and drag it out there, but once the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder happens when he's brought his right foot for here, eh, here, he falls over and flops. It is never, ever a foul, ladies and gentlemen. It is shoulder-to-shoulder. -shoulder. But again, will you hear that? The, the referee and Bobby Madden helped Rangers give a free kick that wasn't a free kick that resulted in Celtic taking the lead in the game? No. What's more annoying than Bobby Madden getting this clearly wrong and it not being a free kick is the way we responded to yet another set piece. It's just, the communication just doesn't work. You know what I mean? You go back to the Braga goal, we're all talking, we're no facing the ball. They score late on for a set piece. You can go through our season, there is so many like that. I mean, Scott Wright still talking to the goalkeeper, doing this. He's not even facing it. We've got two guys at the edge of the box just sitting looking around, listening to Connor Golton. They take the quick free kick. Two of us, two of the players run out, I think. Is it Jacko and Barisic try and run out to put a ball on him? It's then slipped in very nicely to Greg Taylor, by the way. And some people might say, oh, how was Greg Taylor left on his own or whatever? It's because it's Greg Taylor. Who would have envisioned him scoring from outside the box versus Rangers? But again, the slicey luck or anything, like the Robbie the Green. It looks like I think McLaughlin's getting to this and people could say I'm biased on it because I want McGre um, McLaughlin to do well. Sorry, but I think he's getting to this, but it takes a clear deflection of Bassey. Curls away, it goes into the back and net. It is a Serian because it wasn't a free kick. So poor defensively set up. Then a massive deflection. We are 1-0 down and the game's flipped like that. And you're thinking to yourself, 
Here we go again. After the couple of changes, scoring, maybe Rangers players were thinking the exact same as all of us. Here we go again. What mere can we do? Why do we never get the Robbie the Green in this game versus Celtic, especially in a cup? But we did get the Robbie the Green eventually, ladies and gentlemen, because it's a corner, one of the few corners that John McLaughlin didn't actually get out to punch or come out and claim. It's one that drops to the back post. I think... Rangers player misses it, it hits off Car um, Carter Vickers, it drops the Starfield, it hits off him like a pinball, it falls lovingly to Carter Vickers to smash into the back of the net, it's in slow motion, you think there's 2-0, game set and match, but somehow, some way, big Carter Vickers went ahead and recreated Scotty Arfield versus Braga, that's right people, did you really think I wasn't going to mention that? But I did like from Rangers as we eventually got back on the ball, after making a double change, we brought in Stephen Davis, who again, Ryan Jack's running through pillar and post and everything like that, given his injuries and everything, playing every few days, you can see where he is right now in terms of his fitness, what he did have to come off, he wasn't he playing poorly, or if that's just for fitness, and we brought on Stephen Davis, and instantly I was like, right, we're going to get control in the middle of the park. It's not going to be as frantic. No, then we brought on Scotty Arfield as well for Joe Aribo. And I thought to myself, well, that's going to be an interesting one because it's either going to be a redemption story or it's going to continue to trickle down and down and down because he was bad on Thursday night. Von Vossen was absolutely licking his lips at what Arfield missed on Thursday night and that could have messed with his head because he would have heard about it but I'm so glad there is a redemption story because despite me getting on to this player or this player or that this year, you know I absolutely love every single one of them. I always want to see them succeed and we got the redemption story and the way that actually comes down is Connor Goldson, brilliant! Again, by the way, wonderful long through ball right to Tavernier. His first touch here isn't he getting the respect that it deserves because not only does he bring it down, because Mieda's chasing him, and like a greyhound chasing a rabbit, people, he's just non stop. So if Tavernier takes a touch and just kills it deep, he's probably going to lose out in that. So he actually turns in it to keep the ball rolling and keep it going forward. Absolutely top, top work for the captain. Then it's not just fired into an era or anything like that. He picks out Kamaru who actually takes a bad touch here, but the bad touch falls to Scotty and Scotty Arfield just curls one people and I'm getting honestly excited and almost emotional here thinking about it given everything and how bad he's been recently but that just shows you how romantic football can actually be wonderful finish Joe Hart absolutely no chance in the game and now it's sitting 1-1 one -one. you think to yourself right we've conquered that demon of self-doubt we've no beat ourselves after playing well and getting stung let's go now because Celtic didn't look the world beaters, people keep saying they are Celtic, are looking leggy. Let's go for it now. And I were going to jump in to extra time because, of course, that made it 1 1. And despite nearlies and maybes from Rangers looking like they could potentially do something, I mean, Ryan Kent went very close after he cut inside, dragging it just wait, I thought he was brilliant as well, by the way. And I do find it funny that. All, the, all people made us so much about Ralston's challenge versus Ryan Kent when Ryan Kent was facing the wrong way. I never thought, did you see Ralston's face when he had to come on and play Ryan Kent? He was that roasted by Ryan Kent gone in to extra time. They took a centre-back and threw him out to the right-back spot and grabbed Ralston and put him at left back. That is how badly Ryan Kent roasted that laddie this afternoon and shout out to Kent as well and again I know this is a wee bit of messy thoughts and that but I just want to talk about Kent as well because I've never seen a winger especially and I'm not just one of these guys that's flamboyant and only goes forward and he stands there like this, no Mbappe like but just doesn't he come back or anything. I've never seen a winger as physically fit as Ryan Kent actually is. He played all those minutes on Thursday night, he's playing every three days, very rarely gets subbed off, and given what he gives going forward and back, what he was able to do in this game is simply extraordinary, like it genuinely is, and he's not getting the respect for that, because that doesn't come up in stats and everything like that, but if you're watching Rangers, you will see Ryan Kent, because he is such an important part, and again, I've never seen the likes here, that someone who does so much going forward and back is capable of doing this 
non-stop. We talked about Lundstrom earlier hitting the post. People making excuses and complaining about the referees handing them a game and everything like that. If you look at the match, who was the team that looked like it was building and building and building and actually offer things? It was Rangers. Who was the team that went ahead and hit the post and bar a furler twice gone into extra time? It was Rangers and honestly my heart could barely take that. And then going into the second half of extra team, again the team that had already gave so much just two and a half days before, got the break, got the chance and got the goal that their hard work and just grit deserved ladies and gentlemen. There's not one person that can look at that game of football and say Rangers didn't deserve this moment. What I love is Ryan Kent is involved in it despite everything he gave in that game and what I also love is Calvin Bassey. We need to talk about Calvin Bassey. We of course, started at centre-back, but with Barisic picking up a bit of a knock, he went to his best position, which is still his best position by far, in my opinion. And again, what did he give on Thursday night? What's he been doing? Playing non-stop because our other centre-backs, apart from Connor Goulton, can he play more than one game a week? This young lad is playing so much football, and the way this goal actually breaks down... And the way Ryan Kent's got the football and the break, Calvin Bassey's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he's got the right to no make that run, but see if he doesn't, we all understand why, because we say he's gave so much, he must be absolutely knackered. But Calvin Bassey, despite 10, 15 yards behind Ryan Kent, absolutely bursts his pan in, doing the left-hand side, and it's that heart, it's that grit, it's that determination, that willingness to do whatever you can for the badge that wins this game, and I love that it came for that, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I mean, that's better than a world-class strike for 30 yards, see when you just see someone just give everything they've got, it just feels good in here, and that's what he done, Ryan Kent finds him, nice little ball in, and then he just pulls it back to fashion Sakala, Sakala, I thought hit it into the back of it, I'm I'm like that. I'm honestly like this. I'm quite emotional whenever like that. I'm talking to my father, and I'm just like this. This is this is unbelievable. You couldn't write this script, and then you see the highlights back. Of course, unfortunately, it is a, isn't it a Sakala goal? It is Carl Starfelt. So shout it to that laddie as well. Greatly appreciate that wonderful uh, goal. But again, it was all doing to the delivery. It was all doing to the determination because it puts in an area where the defender has to make a decision and has to deal with it and. Fortunately for us, with him dealing it, he smashes it perfectly to the back of the net. Because I'll be honest with you, I didn't think Sakala sitting that unclean. <laughs> and I, that's it, people. You didn't really see much for the Celtic side, who are again all the time in the world to prepare. Our European journey was supposed to help them, and that's what we heard. And we got slapped down with saying, "Ha, ah, you've just gave all that in Thursday night. Enjoy it, cause you're out on Sunday. Well, it never happened, and that should be where their focus is. Why?" Did Rangers run over them despite everything that they gave two and a half days before? That's what they should be wondering. And for us, that's what we really should admire and really appreciate for this Rangers team because they gave everything they go. And I know it's been a disappointing season in terms of the league campaign and everything like that, but as supporters, ladies and gentlemen, that's all you can ever ask for. And you can't always just focus on the negatives all the time. What I saw the day and what I saw on Thursday, heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, with everything they gave, so I'm going to call them it and just say thank you to every single freaking one of them. And that's going to be my thoughts and opinions on the game. If it, but again, I know there were so many other wee moments in that in the game, but I've, I, I've not, I didn't have my same routine. I've not got the heed right done and dusted. I've actually felt better the longer I've done this video because I do enjoy talking to you. But that's my thoughts and opinions in the game. It was a poor refereeing decisions. It was filled with wrong flags and everything like that. I know the Bassey could potentially be offside. I know that could be a complaint, but really? You want to talk about offsides in cup games? I haven't really. You want to talk about them? No, it's no a laughing matter. No, for me, I don't know he's offside. I don't think. He's offside, but really. So, aye, that's my thoughts and opinions in the game of football, ladies and gentlemen. What about you? I hand the reins over to you guys. I can't wait to see the comment section. Honestly, I'm, I'm going to enjoy scrolling through and seeing what you are all saying and everything like that. So let me know your thoughts and opinions. Who's out to you? Aye, that's all I'm going to say. I'm probably not going to be making videos over the next little while and that as well because I've got a lot to sort out. I've got to look after this and everything like that for a wee while. And aye, I'll see you again. I can't guarantee when I'll be back to making videos regularly or anything like that. But I've enjoyed speaking here. It's been a good result. And 
I'll see you whenever the next video comes, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your night. It was a beautiful Sunday. And hopefully there's plenty more. I've been CJ over now too. Uh, that was hard, ladies and gentlemen. I probably we cut there, if I'm honest with you. But aye, I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves and bye bye.